قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We had commenced a theme and a topic connecting to the Quran. And in this regard, we gave in a previous lesson, not last lesson, the lesson before this, the incident where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam requested Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to recite for him Quran, an ayah of the Quran which drove him to tears and in the last section we discussed the ayah that prompted him to cry that prompted him to tears that drove him to tears we continue with that discussion that when he recited the ayah فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَاكَ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِالشَّهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدٍ Where Allah asks Rasulullah in this ayah, how will it be then when we bring from every people a witness and bring you as a witness against these people? When the Prophet heard this, he was in tears. And he said, I have to bear witness against my own people. Allah will make me testify and what is the testimony that I will have to make? And we made mention that the day that the messenger's mission was complete, on the occasion of the final hajj, he turned to the people and asked, did I do my job? Did I fulfill my mission? Did I deliver my message? And the entire ummah said, yes, you have fulfilled the amana." This means Rasulullah fulfilled his task. Now the responsibility is ours. So when Allah questions Rasulullah about his task, he will say, yes, they agreed that I conveyed the message. So the only people that may not have done the job would be us. So we learn from here that among the responsibility of us being the moderate ummah, we have a task. And our task is that we have to be the model of goodness, the model of truth, the model of everything that is pure, virtuous, righteousness. And on the day of Qiyamah, Allah may ask people, that did you not have a model of righteousness? Because we are supposed to be that model. And if we are not, then Rasulullah is going to be bearing witness against us. And this drove him to cry profusely that he was emotionally not able to continue listening to the Quran Kareem. And he said to Abdullah ibn Masud, Hasbuk, it's enough. And in our last discussion, I made mention to you that I want to draw a parallel between two prophets to let us appreciate the rank and the position of our beloved prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before Allah so that we understand the severity and the intensity of him bearing witness against you and I. I want to share with you, but before I go, on to that. I want to compare two things. Allah had given Musa alayhi salatu a message. And when the conversation between Allah and Musa alayhi salatu wasalam happened and Allah gave him his mission, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam immediately made a list of difficulties that he is going to experience in giving the message to Firaun to the Pharaoh. 
he made a list of problems and he said to Allah, this mission that I have been asked to fulfill is going to be difficult. They, the people of, the, of Pharaoh, have an arrest warrant against me because I killed someone. How do I go through to Egypt to Pharaoh without someone arresting me? Then he said, I have a problem with my tongue and my speech. I stutter. And as a, as a result, I get frustrated. My chest tightens. Can you send Harun, my brother, with me? So Musa alayhi salatu was salam made a whole list of difficulties. And then Allah says to Musa, don't worry Musa, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. But Musa alayhi salatu was salam had a feeling in his heart that I've been charged with this responsibility, but I have these difficulties. And he had to make mention of these difficulties. He had to express these difficulties before Allah, before Allah telling him that don't stress. Don't worry, I will take care of these. Now on the opposite side, I want us to understand the rank of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa and his back faced the Kaaba. This is when he was in Mecca, he had to pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa. The position of the Kaaba was such that even if he had to pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa, the Kaaba was such that he could pray from an area that in spite of praying from towards Masjid al-Aqsa, his back did not face the Kaaba. But when he migrated to Medina, he still had to pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa. And as a result, his back faced the Kaaba. And this hurt his feelings. He did, he did not even ask for help. And Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاحَا Subhanallah. Allah says to Rasulullah that we are observing that now that you are in Medina and you have to face towards Masjid al-Aqsa, your back is facing to the Kaaba and we've observed that you are feeling hurt about it. It is, con it is of concern. Indeed, we see the turning of your face to heavens. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْحِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ we shall surely turn you to a qibla which you shall like. This ummah has a new identity and Allah describes it in the Quran because it makes the messenger happy. But the point I want to drive is that the Prophet did not have to ask for wanting to turn towards the Kaaba. Allah changed the direction of Qibla of all humanity because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just looked up to the sky. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْحِكَ فِي السَّمَاء We noticed that you looked up to the sky. He did not even have to say anything. Just his gaze towards the sky was sufficient for Allah to change the Qibla. That is how important Rasulullah is to Allah. Now imagine, that same messenger, when he is brought on the day of Qiyamah, and he is made to speak against someone, do you think anybody can be saved against that now? If he says even one word against someone, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are we going to be doing in front of Allah? The messenger will say on that day, O oh Allah, this nation took this Quran and abandoned it. They did not care about it. This book that we have with a beautiful cover and glossy print, 
took 23 years of the messenger's struggles sallallahu alaihi wasallam much blood was shed much insults did the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam take how many times was he hurt so that one day we can recite this quran what have we done for this quran how much time have we given to this book i want to leave you with just what allah says about the bani israel and their book one of the most powerful and shocking things that i have come to learn about the quran and the attitude of people with the quran stay tuned inshallah when we return we will continue with our discussion طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Before the break we spoke about the witness of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم We gave an example of the position of Rasulullah and Musa عليهم الصلاة والسلام and the position of Rasulullah and if such an honorable prophet has to bear witness against us do we stand a chance it is in the broad discussion of our connection and relationship to the quran e kareem and i want to leave you with just what allah says about the bani israel and their book one of the most powerful and shocking things i have read allah says wa minhum ummiyun لا يعلمون الكتاب الا اماني وانهم الا يظنون and among them are unlettered ones ومنهم اميون لا يعلمون الكتاب who do not know the scripture الا اماني وانهم الا يظنون except a little bit of wishful thinking but they are only assuming things about the quran or about the book They don't know what the book says but they think they do My beloved friends What is Allah talking and who is he talking about the Bani Israel Minhum ummiyun they are unlettered la ya'lamun al-kitab they don't know the book illa amaniya sometimes they talk about the book out of wishful thinking wa hum and they assume things about the book they don't know what the book says but they think they do honestly ask yourself this question have we met muslims like these muslims that don't know the quran but think they know what it says and they make confident assumptions about what the quran says abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says He wants to understand how is it that they don't understand the book. Abdullah ibn Abbas says he wants to understand regarding this ayah how is it that they don't understand the book. What does Allah mean? Minhum ummiyun la ya'lamun al-kitab. Allah means that all they do Ibn Abbas says all they do with the book and the Quran and the Torah is they memorize some of it and they recite some of it that's all they have they have no clue what is inside it shocking they happy when someone recites it to them but they don't understand it is that the bani israel and that is the bani israel that the quran talks about and that is the bani israel that ibn abbas has given a tafsir of this ayah most certainly it is about the bani israel but let's reflect does that apply to you and i is that only the bani israel who is that applying to also subhanallah what a scary question to ask Ibn Abbas what was not describing the Muslims 
he was describing the Bani Israel. But when we read and reflect on the description that he has given of the Bani Israel, we shiver. How are we going to stand in front of the testimony of Allah's Messenger when he says we've abandoned his testimony? When he will say we abandoned this Quran, may Allah not make us from those who abandoned this book. It is never late for anyone. This deen is full of hope. Allah says we have made this Quran really easy for those who want to remember. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ We have really made this Qur'an easy for those who want to remember Allah. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Is there anyone that wants to remember? May Allah make us from the people of the Qur'an who carry the legacy of the Qur'an. May Allah help us and our families appreciate this beautiful gift. May Allah make us people of the Quran. This session that we had in the past three weeks was for the purpose of us having interest in learning the Quran, in understanding the Quran. And inshallah, in our future programs in this section or in this time allotted Islam in context, we are going to be discussing various aspects of the Quran and bring the Quran to everyday life so that we know what the Quran says and we become connected to the Quran Kareem. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the energy to do what we have intended to do and he also gives us the energy to listen, appreciate and understand the Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Qur'ani nabdu hayati, Qur'ani tahar dhati, Qur'ani asmatu amri, Qur'ani tawq najati. Qur'ani nabdu hayati, Qur'ani tahar dhati, Qur'ani asmatu amri, Qur'ani tawq najati. Qur'ani nabdu hayati, Qur'ani tahar dhati, Qur'ani asmatu amri, Qur'ani tawq najati. Qur'ani nabdu hayati, Qur'ani tahar dhati, Qur'ani asmatu amri.